Hello, my name is Neil Baum. I'm a urologist in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I would like to take a few moments to speak with you about the use of an artificial urinary sphincter to treat incontinence which occurs after a prostate operation. In this seven minute video I will define urinary incontinence, tell you about the causes, the evaluation, and then one of the treatment options consisting of an artificial urinary sphincter. Incontinence is defined as loss of the urine without the owner's permission. The sphincter is a muscle which functions to hold the urine inside the bladder until it is time for the man to evacuate the urine contents inside the bladder. The urinary sphincter can be injured or damaged at the time of surgery and this is a uncommon but possible uh, complication that occurs after prostate surgery. The symptoms of urinary incontinence after prostate surgery is usually the loss of urine with coughing, sneezing, or any activity that increases the pressure in the abdomen onto the bladder. Oftentimes the problem is so significant that the man has to wear pads or even a diaper in order to control urination. The evaluation is simple. It consists of keeping a voiding diary, measuring the amount of urine loss and when urine is lost, a physical examination, a urinalysis, and oftentimes requires a look into the bladder with a lighted tube called a cystoscopy and a urodynamic study which measures the pressures inside the bladder. The treatment options for incontinence following prostate surgery consist of a bulking agent injected into the urethra, the use of a sling placed underneath the urethra to compress the urethra until it is time to void, or the use of the artificial urinary sphincter. The artificial urinary sphincter mimics the healthy normal sphincter in that it keeps the urine inside the bladder and keeps the urethra closed until it is time to urinate. It consists of three components. That is a cuff which is placed around the urethra, a balloon that is placed under the muscles of the abdomen, and a small pump that is placed in the scrotum. In order to urinate, the man squeezes the pump inside the scrotum, which is entirely concealed, that moves the fluid from the cuff to the balloon in the abdomen, allowing the urethra to open and the man is able to urinate. Within a minute after the urethra is open, the urethra will then become closed and the man will be able to hold the urine inside the bladder. The procedure consists of a one-day uh, hospital uh, procedure. The operation takes 45 to 60 minutes to accomplish. Antibiotics are given before, during, and after the procedure. The procedure requires a general anesthetic or a spinal anesthetic and it consists of a small opening made on the scrotum or slightly below the scrotum between the scrotum and the rectum. At that time uh, the cuff is placed around the urethra, the balloon is placed in the abdomen and is filled with less than an ounce of a salt solution uh, which if it should leak outside the body does not cause any problems or any unwanted side effects. The pump is placed in the scrotum. The tubing between the pump and the balloon and the pump and the cuff is connected and then the small opening uh, is closed and the man is taken to the, reco taken to the recovery room. <clears throat> The man can 
be discharged from the hospital after he is able to urinate. He takes antibiotics and pain medicine for a few days after the procedure. And the device is left in the open position for six to eight weeks after the surgery. After six to eight weeks, the man comes to the office. The pump is then activated, and the man now is able to be continent and not require the use of pads or diapers, or only an occasional pad is required after the procedure. I trained at the Baylor College of Medicine in the uh, late 1970s, where Dr. Brantley Scott developed uh, this procedure and refined the procedure until today it remains the gold standard for treating urinary incontinence following prostate surgery. Today, over 150,000 men worldwide have an implantation of an artificial urinary sphincter. The results are that 80% of the men will be continent and dry or using zero to one pad per day. Nearly 90% of all the men say they would undergo the operation again and nearly 100% say they would refer a friend who has a similar problem for an artificial urinary sphincter. The risks associated with the procedure are that men who have urinary tract infections, spinal cord injury, or skin infections may have a slightly increased risk of infection following the surgery. Erosion of the cuff into the urethra may occur, but if the man waits six to eight weeks after the procedure, this is highly unlikely. Of course, this is a mechanical device and it may malfunction requiring a repair or a revision. Men occasionally report pain and discomfort, but usually this is temporary and goes away seven to ten days after the procedure. And if the it, it, device is a failure, of course, uh, incontinence will reoccur. There's good news, and that is most insurance companies, including Medicare, will cover the cost of the procedure. So what's the bottom line? Incontinence occurs in 3 to 5% of men who have surgical removal of their prostate gland for prostate cancer. Evaluation is easily accomplished and the artificial urinary sphincter remains the gold standard for treatment of urinary incontinence following prostate gland surgery for cancer. I hope you have found this video helpful and useful. If you have any additional questions, you are welcome to call me at 504-891-8454 or please go to my website, w